What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We're gonna be doing a little bit more of a vlog style video. I don't have like a particular subject in mind, but I'm gonna be trying to just get little bits and pieces of everything I've got going on today. So I gotta to call the winner for the silver 24 valve, which is that trick right there. Uh, did I point at the Jeep? I meant that, <laughs> not the Jeep. I gotta swap the tail light here and I'll explain that real quick. So we got the truck painted and this was a very, very, very simple mistake. But I think when he took the tail lights out to get close and paint the inner part of the behind the tail light, I think what had happened was all he did was he put the turning signal and brake light bulb in the reverse section and then he put the reverse light in the uh, blinker and brake light section of the tail light. So all I got to do is take out the four star bit screws and just flop the bulbs around. That's it for the truck. Otherwise, this truck's ready to go off to one of you guys, which by the way, I think it's like 48 hours left to get 20 times entries to win this truck and then 20x entries are gone. All you gotta do is go to lmpgear.com, you can buy a hat, you can buy a coat, you can buy a hoodie, shirt, sticker, anything you want off the store and as soon as you check out you're automatically entered. And the thing I get asked a lot is how do I enter if I don't have PayPal because it says that you know we use PayPal on the website. You don't actually need a PayPal account. PayPal is just the payment provider that we use. You can continue as a guest when you go through the checkout process. Just hit continue as guest and then pay by debit or credit card and you can check out, you don't need any account. You just check out like you would normally with your shipping info and your name and that's that's it. And then you check out and then you're automatically entered to win. Let's get to doing something here. I gotta throw the wheel caps back on this real quick. One more thing we're, uh, we were missing here. See if I can film this by resting the camera on my on my arm. This is the emblem that we decided to go with. And I just kind of start from the top and then I, once I have it right where I want it, just kind of rock it straight down. That's pretty much it. And then just kind of like, I'll take the palm of my hand and just kind of like, I don't know, put like 15 pounds of pressure on it, give or take. And just kind of like hold it in position to make sure all the adhesive evenly spreads out and makes contact. And then other than that, that's it. That's all you do. It's a super simple, small little upgrade or improvement, I guess you could say, not necessarily an upgrade, but it, it makes a big difference with the appearance at a first glance. Swap these bulbs around real quick. It's kind of nice, you don't need to take the tailgate down. Really simple, you just rotate them out, just rotate them back in. Gently set your tail light back. And that's all she needs. We got a couple things we gotta do with this too. We gotta fill it up and take it to go pick up some feed. Wait to start. Beautiful. We are almost to the post office. We've got a ton of packages to drop off. And currently, guys, just to be clear, we actually have someone else doing most of our shipping again. It's a super high efficiency fulfillment center and stuff is shipping fast. Everybody that has ordered something in the last two, three weeks, comment down below and let everybody know how fast your item shipped. Now I'm talking like uh, a lot of the new shirts, the new hoodies, uh, the, the new coats, stuff like that. Uh, that's all the stuff that's being done by this new fulfillment center. We're still shipping a lot of our older t-shirts that we've had around for the last several months, like decals and keychains and you know stuff like that. We're still shipping a lot of that stuff out, which is all of what this stuff is right here, which is like some of the old t-shirts that we're still trying to get rid of, decals, keychains, stuff like that. Nothing crazy, um, but just stuff that's you know not too overwhelming to try to fulfill so that we can keep up to speed with everything as fast as possible. After this, we're going to be heading to the feed mill. We gotta pick up some feed for all the animals. We got the stuff that we needed to keep our animals fed and living. We got some grass hay for the horse, some corn, some feed for the chickens, all kinds of stuff. I think this is probably one of the only things that we've ever actually hauled in the bed of this. We've like pulled goosenecks with it and stuff like that. But in terms of like throwing stuff in the bed, I'm pretty sure this is like the first thing we've ever actually thrown in the bed of this truck. And now we're about to call the winner for this truck. Hello? Hello, is this Nancy? Is this Malachi? This is, how are you? I'm good Malachi, how are you? I am doing great. You have any good day so far? Oh my gosh, 
gosh, my stomach is still twirling <laughs> since Sunday. Yes, it's been fantastic. Awesome. Is your son on the phone? He is here. He came to my work. His name is Tyler. Nice to meet you, Tyler. How you doing? <laughs> Pretty good. How are you? Well, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm sitting in your truck right now. <laughs> you guys are getting a truck and some money. Yeah, it's awesome because like you just said, it doesn't happen to many people and things like this don't happen to bakers ever. So. <laughs> no, no, it, it doesn't happen to many people and you got people that... Uh, dream of actually winning the lottery or winning a vehicle or cash or anything that it just they can play their entire life and they never seem to get anything you know and when it happens it's definitely it's definitely a big deal so we're super it's excited awesome. for you guys i was ordering t-shirts and i got to check out and it, i didn't have a paypal or any of the options so i was just like oh we're running out of time for the 10 times entry so yeah. i just text I said, uh, hey, just order these t-shirts. I'll pay you back. And if, if we win, you get the money and I get the truck. And No, that's not what he said. He said, because I'm going to win that truck. I feel. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'll order your shirt. <laughs> and then he told, he had told me, I'll give you 500 when I get the 5000 And then he surprised me and said, you get the 5000 So it was really, really special. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. And good for you, man. That's that's something that uh, a lot of people probably wouldn't do, even if it right. was their parent. It's just, you know, people just get funny about stuff, even if they win it for free. And well, it doesn't cost you anything. You know, it's it's free, you know, it's yeah. free to somebody. Yeah. But, you know, like yeah. that's just that's that's kind of a big deal. You know, like I remember buying my grandpa a truck to him. It was the greatest thing. He's never had anybody do something like that for him. And it was like a huge deal. And like to me, I was just like, I just, I love my grandpa, you know, to me, I didn't think anything of it. I'm like, his truck broke down. He needs a new truck. Of course, I'm going to buy you a new truck. I just like t-shirts. I was like, I, I have a feeling that we're going to win. And I, I like these shirts. And so my mom said, Very nice okay. shirts, by the way, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Just basically it popped up on my Facebook. And I think, I mean, I don't know how other than just watch them with Slim Diesel, which I don't know if you guys have any connections or not, but. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I uh, I bought two of his trucks off him at one point, but that's the only like connection I guess you could say I have with them is um, business wise. And then he makes some posts for me and stuff online and whatnot for marketing yeah. stuff. But he's a super cool guy, by the way. I met him a couple times in person. He's he's a really cool guy. He he's a total jokester online, man. <laughs> like when oh, yeah. you watch his stuff, he is a total clown. But He's actually like a super professional down to earth guy in person. Like he's not he's not a total goofball all the time. Even when we were talking to the gentleman that was handling all the paperwork, we still were just like, my mom called her brother, my uncle, my uncle called the guy. Uh, the guy cracked jokes about us calling the Pope to make sure it was real, which that didn't really happen, but it was funny. <laughs> so yeah, it's just been a few days of just, you know, it's been crazy. We just. Neither one of us probably slept the last two nights, and I've watched just about every YouTube you've made now. So. Well, I appreciate that. That helps us out. That helps us do this. <laughs> well, dude, you're going to enjoy the truck. It's an awesome truck. Well, we just got off the phone with them, but I'm going to start this up so you guys can hear it. Sounds awesome. We're actually about to wash it down. It was a pleasure speaking to you, Nancy and Tyler, and uh, I really hope you guys enjoy this truck. And Tyler's actually doing something super special for his mother. He's actually giving her the cash winnings that go along with this truck. I think that's a super cool thing. She apparently was not expecting that. She didn't like try to negotiate her way into that on the on any kind of a deal. He, she just said that. I told him that he won, and then he said, "No, mom, we won." And I'm going to give you the money that goes with the truck. So that's a super cool thing, Tyler. Way to pass on the positivity and the blessings that you've been given and you've been blessed with to help your mom out. She sounds like she's going to put it to good use. All around, it's an awesome thing. All of you guys that are watching this that supported the channel that, you know, place your orders to win this truck, you guys helped me out, which helps Tyler out, and Tyler helped his mom out, and that's just all around. That's just an awesome, awesome feeling. So yeah, let's get to spraying this thing down. It's finally like 45 degrees out. It's actually super nice. So we're gonna pressure wash this down get all the salt and road debris off of it because It's been like a blizzard and like in the negatives ever since I parked this truck out here And it's just been horribly cold, but it's actually really warm out So we're gonna spray this thing down and then we might go do a little bit of property work. We'll see So 
I've got the Black & Decker battery powered saw. And this is all I bring out. A bunch of batteries. Clip on, good to go. Don't need to warm it up. I explained in a previous video why I'm doing this. So I won't go over it all over again right now, just because. But let me show you something over here that's gonna blow a lot of your guys' minds. Do you see all of that tore up area here? You see how this is, none of that field far off in the distance? None of that field off in the distance is touched, right? But everything right along my property is absolutely tore to pieces. You can see all the field ripped up from the deer. Well, that's because my property is the hub central bedding area in this location, like within a hundreds of yard circle. I mean, this is the most desirable bedding area in this entire location. Unfortunately, we do have neighbors that hunt, but only on this other side of us, which I don't mind people hunting, but I do have a problem with people shooting deer off my property, which I suspect somebody already did this year. I found some fresh gun shell casings under one of my stands that I just set up this season, obviously, because I just bought the property. Fresh, they were not there when I set the stand. I hunted it multiple times. They were never there. Big, bright yellow shotgun slug casings right after season opened up. Under my stand, well into my property. Not like right on the corner, right on the edge, like well into my property. Don't know who it was. I didn't have any cameras on the stand. And the property wasn't even posted at that time. So, you know, what am I gonna do about it? It wasn't posted, therefore legally, it's kinda hard to press charges or prosecute when you don't post your property. We took care of that, we've got signs everywhere now. So there are no excuses. If you walk on this property, you're gonna know you cross that line. We've got neighbors that like to have blinds in this field and stuff, and they actually, they finally took them down, but they like to aim right at our property, looking into our woods, waiting for these deer to walk out of our property, which there's nothing you can do about it. Once they walk out of the property line, it's they're out of the property. But what I can prevent is people from shooting deer while they're back in my property by trying to make the property line as dense and as thick and as nasty as possible. That way, if there's deer just inside my woods, they can't see them 100 yards back in there and try to drop one of them and then just say, oh, I shot it in the field and then it ran in there, you know, because yes, that can actually happen, but I'm giving an example for somebody that's actually being dishonest just because they saw an impressive deer on my side and they wanted to shoot it and whatever, get away with it. This is what we're gonna try to do to prevent that as much as possible is make it darn near impossible to shoot a deer out of our property unless you are literally in our property. Um, that way there's no little loopholes people can try to pull on us. So you can see this line here, this this whole line was kind of open, like this little strip here, you know, just kind of open. You can see back in here a little ways, but now it is thick, it is dense, and it's posted. You can see at the edge of one of my posted signs right there on that tree. It is posted like every 10 yards all the way down the property line. And it is actually amazing just how much these deer are tearing up these treetops because not only is it going to create a visual barrier for the neighbors, but it also creates a hard edge that we can hunt on the inside of our property because the deer will love to feed along it, walk along it, make rubs along it, but they love to browse on buds and you know just all kinds of little woody brows. Some species of trees, more desirable than others, but look at this browse line along here. I mean, you can just see there's deer hair everywhere, but just look at all of the tracks underneath all of these tree crowns. These were not here when we did this. All these tracks, these are all from the deer. Okay. I mean, just all over the place under here. I mean, it is just crazy. You can even see, like, look at all of these things all just nipped up. And this is a good example of why we do this. You see that? Chewed up. Every single bud on this tree is chewed. Everything within reaching distance of a deer's mouth is chewed off. All of them, all the way around. It's crucial that deer have ample woody brows, but another thing, like I said, you know, it's good to keep the neighbors from being able to get a clear shot at deer in here, all that other stuff, that's great, but it's incredible brows for the deer too. I mean, just look at all the deer hair from them rubbing around under all these things. You can see them just nipping all the little twigs off and stuff. But what it's also gonna do is slow these deer down before they get out to the field. Because everybody knows typically in the evenings the deer are getting out to the field right before dark. And everybody should want to make sure that their property is set up 
the best possible way for them to succeed on their ground. I'm doing what's necessary for me to do the best I can with being able to harvest the deer that I'm trying to harvest and manage the deer I want to manage. And this is just part of the game. This is just how you got to do it to increase your odds of being successful when in the woods, which can also mean sometimes you have to try to make it as difficult as possible for your neighbors to shoot deer in some situations, which is what I'm doing right now. Now, what are these deer going to do when they're on their way out to the field? In most cases, they're probably going to stop and browse on all these buds and browse on all these tree crowns all the way down along this edge. And they're probably gonna hang out in the woods as much as possible until they're satisfied with their woody browse fill for the day to top off before they go out to the main feeding fields. They're probably gonna do that before they go out and it's gonna really slow these deer down and keep them in here as long as possible because if they're on my property, they're safe except for when I'm trying to fill a tag, and that's the way I want it to be. I want these deer to have every excuse possible to stay on this ground as long as possible. It just doesn't seem right. I mean, look at all the tracks, all this ruffled up snow. It's been melting all day, it's in the 40s, but look at all of the tracks under here. The amount of browse is insane, but clearly you can see the field's just absolutely destroyed. So they are going out to the field, and they are making a dent in that too. Um, we've got an insane deer population around here. We do have an incredible deer population, but it's also uh, still very tough to harvest a big mature buck, which is what I'm after. And this might be, you know, you, you need to find all the pieces to the puzzle and try to figure out what you need to do to try to make that encounter happen. And this is just another small piece of the puzzle to try to put the odds in our favor, my, you know, for me and my wife and our son, I'm sure it won't be too many years here and he'll be coming out with us trying to shoot a deer you know before you know it so we're trying to do everything that we know how to to put the odds in our favor and uh this is our first property hunting property that Reagan and i bought so it's going to be interesting seeing all these things implemented to see how they work pretty excited about this i mean this is proof right here you're seeing you know that this this stuff does work the deer browsing on it they're i mean they're they're destroying this but uh super excited let's get over here and hinge a couple trees That's how we do it. So as you guys can see, I got a few trees hinged here. I'm actually gonna hook onto this bigger one and pull it down a little bit more. You don't really want them hanging up that much. We've already got quite a few down low, so I, I mean, that's not a huge deal in this spot, but you want the trees cut about hip height and you want them, you want the crowns to touch the ground ideally. We'll get it down. But anyways, that's essentially what we're doing. Cutting two thirds through the tree, leaving a huge chunk of that cambium layer. And these root systems will actually feed the tree up through this layer and actually keep the tree alive for most of these species for quite some time. But the main purpose of that is to create this barrier, but then also look at all the sunlight that can come down now where that one crown came out. One crown from a tree that really wasn't even that, that big really at the base of it, but the crown was big, opened up all that light and it's gonna make it just completely thick through here. Look at this. Look at this row of brush. I mean, you can't even penetrate through that. I mean, it's thick stuff. We're just gonna try to keep going and make this row with the trees that we have available all the way down. It'll be something, that's for sure. Beautiful evening. Sun's going down. Got probably 10 more minutes of light, so I'm gonna show you the progress I made. There's the habitat hook. A little Black & Decker battery-powered saw. This thing ripped through, I wanna say 60 trees today. Nothing huge though. When I say trees, I'm not talking like you know, stuff that size, but here's our where we ended. All I've got to do is make it to the river, which is like another 20 yards, but I know that if I keep going, I'm gonna be working another 20 minutes and it's gonna be pitch black and I won't be able to show you guys what I did. Here's where I ended off. There's the hinge, here's the hinge. Get a couple hickories right here. Take a look at that. Beautiful, beautiful hinge in terms of how much I left. this big one here you can see the size of my hand it's not a huge tree but it's, it's a, I mean, I've got really big hands I mean it's a pretty it's a decent sized tree for what we're for what I usually hinge that's about the biggest I hinge and you can see the back side of this mess it's just like a complete 
mess, which is which is what I want. I mean, it just goes on and on. I'll show you a little bit more here. You can just look at all these hinges all the way through here. They just keep on going. And once I got back to the woods here, I'm not only still doing the hinging like I was, but I'm actually starting to elevate the hinging in terms of uh, stacking them more directly on top of each other and closer together to try to get the wall of brush a little bit higher. Eventually, this is all going to get nasty. If you look up behind me, this is where I'm hinge cutting. You can see the line of sunlight all the way, I'm spinning around here for a sec, all the way wherever I stopped, and there's where I stopped, but wherever I hinged, there's just a huge new gap up above that's gonna allow tons of new sunlight down here. And you see all these briars and stuff in here and all these little shoots, and all these little tiny shoots sticking up all over the place. All that stuff is going to explode over the summer. In the next three, four years, five years, this wall's gonna be so thick with brush and briars I mean, it's gonna be one of those things to where you ain't gonna wanna walk through. And that's another aspect of why I'm doing this even thicker and nastier once I got back in the woods here, which we're still gonna drop a bunch more trees on this whole stretch. I'm just trying to get the main direction of it all dropped down so that it's easier to drop trees on the left and right of the trail. But you also want it to be so thick and so nasty that a guy with a gun on his shoulder or a crossbow slung over his back isn't gonna wanna pile on through here and try to trespass. You know, you can't stop everybody and you can't prevent everything, but you can make it an absolute nightmare for them if they are gonna try to break the law and trespass and you know do stuff they shouldn't be doing. You can at least make it as difficult as possible because, uh, well, you know, you shouldn't be over here anyways. And I'm not in the business of growing bigger deer for them. I'm in the business of shooting bigger deer and raising bigger deer and holding bigger deer for myself and Reagan and whoever hunts my property, not my neighbors. If I'm not doing them any harm and leaving their ground alone, then I'm gonna do everything I can within my power to make sure that my property is the best in the area. Ground's not cheap. Um, this particular piece was pretty cheap, but for the most part, dirt's not cheap compared to anything else that you buy time to time. So I'm gonna get the most use out of mine as I can because What's the point of uh, buying a hunting property if you're not gonna optimize it so that it's the best experience possible. Anyways guys, hopefully you enjoyed that. This video might have been pretty long. I just wanted to add this in here. I know that there's some people that really don't care about the property work stuff or the deer hunting stuff or whatever, but for the people that do, this is for you. Leave that thumbs up, subscribe if you have not done so yet, and also, if you want to enter to win previously, my dad, 1992 W250 12 valve comes with only 86,000 miles on it. It's actually an 86,000 mile truck. It's not a two wheel drive for the people that are asking. It's a four wheel drive. If you want to enter to win that truck, just go to lmpgear.com. You can buy a hoodie, you can buy a hat, buy anything off the store. And as soon as you check out, you're automatically entered to win. It's that simple. Anyways, guys, hopefully enjoy the video. Link is in the description below to go to the website. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.